In the Sahel, officials say at least 63 people have been killed in attacks in the last two days. At least 12 soldiers were killed in an ambush by gunmen in the northwest of Burkina Faso on Sunday. Now, seven soldiers who had been reported missing have been found alive. On the same day, 51 civilians were killed in central Mali near the border with Niger. No group has claimed responsibility for the attacks. The Sahel region has been in the grip of an insurgency led by militants linked to Al-Qaeda and Islamic State. Mali, Burkina Faso and Niger are the most affected. In Mali, French troops and UN peacekeepers have been battling militants. Meanwhile, the UN mission in Mali has condemned the attacks on civilians. Well, to understand what's happening in the Sahel, let's bring in Ornella Moderan, head of the Sahel program at the Institute for Security Studies. She is joining us live via Zoom from Bamako in Mali. Well, welcome to the program. Thank you for taking time to speak to us. Well, what is the driving rise in killings in the Sahel at this time? Uh, as you rightly mentioned, the Sahel has, has been confronted with a dire security crisis for the past at least nine years. Um, over the past few months, we have seen a revival of violence against civilians with a series of mass attacks on villages, including in Niger, in Burkina Faso, and, and most recently in um, in Mali, in the northern part of, of Mali. This is in, in a context where um, uh, non-state armed groups, especially by violent extremist groups, um, have been extremely active and pushing for an, uh, for an ad, sorry, for an agenda that um, really um, pushes them to, to want and control entire communities. Well, Ornella, as you have mentioned, uh, we are seeing a trend where killings occur, but no one is claiming responsibility. What does this say about the perpetrators and their methods? It depends, really. I mean, over the, the course of the, of the crisis that has been uh, lasting for years now, some attacks have been claimed and some, some haven't. In the most recent months, we rather see a trend, as you rightly mentioned, towards uh, the lack of responsibility claiming. That being said, it's, it's pretty clear from the mode of action who could be behind these attacks. And the uh, main suspects, I would say, are the are two main coalitions of um, uh, Islamist groups. On the one hand, the group for the support of Islam and and, and the Muslim, the Jasim, uh, or Jinim in English, and um, and on the other side, the Islamic State in the Greater Sahara. There, there are various reasons why these groups could be either slower or not willing to publicly claim uh, these attacks, and one of them, I think, is the fact that um, um, there is a form of um, opposition uh, going on between the two groups themselves. Well, Ornella, with that being said, how are governments there and regional forces like the G5 Sahel responding to this new wave? This is a great question. I mean, governments have been trying, governments and more generally conventional forces, I would say. So this includes uh, national defense and security forces, as well as uh, G5 Sahel Joint Force, as well as um, um, other international partners, the, the, the French force in, in Mali, and so on. So all of these forces have been trying to, to curb the uh, Islamic attack for, for months now. Um, and this hasn't been extremely successful. There hasn't been any clear change in strategy in the recent months, if not for the French announcing a withdrawal from a, at least a partial withdrawal from, from Northern Mali. So one of the main concerns among the uh, public opinion here, here in Mali, I think is, well, how exactly can the government in the midst of a transition period that's already politically challenging in itself, uh, adjust and increase its capacity to, to provide protection for civilians. There's no clear answer, and I think that's, that's part of the concerning part in this. All right, let's leave the conversation there for now. Ornella Moderan, the head of Sahel program at the Institute of Security Studies, thank you, many thanks. We appreciate your perspective.